Hello, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Resurrect Autos HQ. So, today guys, we are going to continue with the Ford Fiesta. The suspicious water damage one, whatever you want to call it. Um, we are going to be continuing with this today. Also, I've got another Fiesta we need to do some work on um, in a couple of hours. Just need to carry on with this for now. Let's just see how far we get. Um, it's a, another Fiesta. It's a Fiesta ST. Black one that I sold um oh must be a year and a half year ago um and it's back for some work um he tries to do uh vinny he tries to do as much as he can on his car which is great because obviously if you own a vehicle you should be able to you know look after it maintain it and do as much as you can on it yourself um but every now and then he comes across a thing that do you know what i mean because i've got the lift and i've got the you know the movement um, it's just easier for me to help him out and do bits and pieces where I can. So for now, let's crack on because I did stay a couple of hours late last night and done the front end, as you can see. So let me explain what I've done and we'll crack on. Let's do this. Right, okay. So guys, as you can see, we've got some front end on. Um, <clears throat> new slam panel, new rad pack, new crash bar. Um, all fitted um, and a lot of it's put back together still some bits and pieces to do still got the lock to do so there is some still stuff to put together and put back on um, but it's getting there we have got <clears throat> a couple of misfires on this one um, it's saying misfire on cylinder one and cylinder two um So I don't know. I'm not quite sure um, what is going on here. Um, <clears throat> it's coming up with these, look. Cylinder one and cylinder two. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, but it's actually ticking over and running quite nice. So I don't know if it's something to do with. The plugs or the leads. We've had this before, didn't we? We had this on the automatic. I hope it ain't gonna go down this route with the same as with the automatic went as well. It's actually running all right, it's not sluggish. Revs up really well. Let me try and delete these codes. It could have been just an old code or something. Let me just clear. Quick erase these codes. Let me turn it off a minute. <clears throat> what is that noise? Oh, it's coming from the bloody... Yes, yes, I know, you don't like it, for some reason. Right. <laughs> right, let me just try that again. Um, so we want to go into there, just quick erase. I think we've done it, haven't we? Let me just check. Yeah, there's no, there's no code coming up now. Just want to quickly go back into it. We want to double check. We want to quickly do another scan. Lights are on. So yeah, maybe it was an old code or maybe it was just something that was sitting around. Got one. I'm assuming we're going to get a lot of codes coming up because I've got loads of things unplugged in here. 
Um, everything's unplugged. Look at all this. Look. Um, and obviously, you know, bits and pieces here. This crash sensor, this is still unplugged. So we're going to get something. But yeah, <clears throat> it's definitely getting there though. But um, I don't want to continue until I know that, um, you know, that is running right. That needs to be correct running right before we do anything else. Um, yeah, so the only thing that's coming up really, which is strange because I've got like lights at the back. It's not, <laughs> mind you, I haven't turned them on, activated them. You, you, they'd only come up on here if you activate it. So if I don't, if I don't turn the lights on, the rear ones, the rear towel uh, lights, they won't flag up as a problem because I've not activated the switch. So you can see that's all it is saying is this, which is the crash sensor uh, for the front, frontal. So yeah, maybe that was just a... Yeah. It's actually running really, really nice. We've got the, um, the, the airbag light on, but that's because of that, that crash sensor at the front, the front one. That's what's coming up like that. So yeah, all good. Right, okay, let's continue. <laughs> we have got another Fiesta I need to be working on today as well. Um, and that is um, a Fiesta ST. Um, it's in for a new drive shaft um, and gearbox oil. So we'll crack on that in a little while. But let me just continue with this for now. Um, let me just see how far we get. But it's definitely getting there. We are definitely moving in the right direction. So let's do this. Right, okay. Well, guys, that didn't take too long, did it? Um, as you can see, the bonnet needs painting. But I knew about that anyway. Um, <clears throat> do you know what I mean? So I anticipated that to be done. Uh, the inside's the right colour. <laughs> but it's the outside needs another respray. Um, this ain't the original one. The original one was a bit damaged. This one is off another one. I actually went and picked it up. Um, from a guy, let me just put a little bit of tape down there. I don't want that coming through. That's it, because I taped the whole, I took off the actual, um, he probably would have done it, I've got to be honest, the painter, but um, I've took off the actual um, jet washer jetters, so um, 
he can he can he can paint right across underneath them then, and then when it comes back, I'll just fit him in. So yeah, um, just needs another just needs a respray really. Um, so absolutely needs a rub down as well. So I'm sure he'll going to be attacking that with a bit of sandpaper, rubbing that right back, um, re repriming it, um, and then spraying it. Um, I'm going to have to get the paint for this. Uh, my paint suppliers, they're coming tonight to take the sample off the fuel flap. Um, they will take that away. They will get me some paint. Um, not only for this one, they're going to get me some paint um, for that one as well. Because um, obviously that needs a little bit of paint work as well. We've got the silver bumper for this one. Um, so the silver bumper needs painting as well. So I'll get enough paint um, to do that one. And this one, because it's the same, exactly the same colour. So, yeah, we are definitely getting here now. Um, but what I really want to do is get this one outside and bring in the other Fiesta that we've got to do some work on. The ST, Fiesta ST. So, let's get this out of the way. Bring in the Fiesta ST and I'll explain exactly what we need to get done on that one. So, let's do this. So here we go, guys. We have Vinny's Ford Fiesta ST. Um, I sold this to him a while back now, um, and he's been modding it and sort of changing bits and pieces and doing, you know, just tweaking it a little bit and doing whatever he wants to do to it. Um, he's done quite a lot of work himself. He has done the exhaust system. Um, he's done all like poly bushes all around on the suspension side. Um, <clears throat> but he's got a little bit of an issue when it comes to drive shaft on the driver's side. So he supplied me a brand new one. Um, it's all set up, ready to go. Even comes with uh, a new nut to se secure it to the actual hub. Um, <clears throat> and I said to him, whilst we're doing that, we've got to drop the gearbox oil to pull the drive shaft. So we might as well just change the gearbox oil as well so i'll do that for him as well um so that's what we're gonna do he normally does bits and pieces for himself on his own car which is great um but because i've got the lift it's a little bit easier to just take it up on the lift take the wheels off and then pull the drive shaft out and get the gearbox changed the oil so let's set up let's crack crack on with this one now guys let's do this Right, okay, guys, there we go. That is the gearbox oil dropped and draining um, whilst I was pulling the drive shaft out and doing the work on that end. Um, I was just letting the gearbox oil just drain out, keep dripping, dripping away. Um, and then uh, I'll put the plug back in there. And then uh, the fill-up point is there. So I always remove the fill-up point first. Um, and then remove the drain plug because, uh, yeah, it helps sometimes. So there we go. That's that done. So let me show you the gear, the actual drive shaft with the issue. Um, so what's happened is it looks like it's come apart. Um, you can see it there. And the actual grease is everywhere. Plus as well, I don't know if I can mimic it. But this it's so loose and notchy and bangy in there that he can feel it when he's driving. As he pulls away, um, he can feel that sort of movement on the drive shaft. The other side's absolutely spot on. 
this one was a problem. And now let, let me show you the mess that this is made in here. Look at that mess. <laughs> it is everywhere and he's thrown it everywhere. So I'm going to have a good clean up around there as well uh, before I put the, drive, the new drive shaft back in place. But um, you can see he's fitted these poly bushes there. Um, and there's uh, some at the back there. You can just see them, the purple ones, look, or mauve purple ones. So these are the polyflex bushes that you can fit to the suspension. Uh, they last a lot longer, these polyflex, but they're really stiff and, and, and strong. Do you know what I mean? So there's not much play in them, but that's because they're designed for a lot of obviously race tracks and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's where we are. That's the mess. So I'm going to crack on, get all that mess cleaned up. Then I'm going to put the new drive shaft in place, put all this back together, and then we're going to go ahead and fill up the gearbox oil um, and get this one done for him. So let's continue. Uh, and yeah, let's do this. So there we go, that is the old one in the box. So I can show him. Um, it's worth taking it, I suppose. Don't know really, I'll, I'll speak to him, see what he wants to do. I can get rid of it as scrap or he can take it with him. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> that's the old one there. Um, all nice and clean as well, guys. So as you can see, all nice and clean and tidy in there. So you've got a new drive shaft coming across here. Um, put a little bit of grease, uh, just a bit of grease on both sides, that side and that side, just to help it go in. Um, yeah, change the gearbox oil. This is the old one here. This is the old one. It's a little bit, I don't know, a little bit. I'm not sure what to say about this, really. It's just a little bit, <laughs> I don't know, weird colouring. I don't know if it's because, like, you know, I don't think it's, like, metal shavings or anything like that. I just think it's maybe, it looks like water and an oil mix, doesn't it? It looks really muddy kind of thing. I don't know, really. Um, anyway, we've got new gearbox oil in there, um, and I've put it in there so until, until it starts to drip out the fill-up point there. Um, and then that's it. I know that it's filled up. So, there we go. That is Vinny's ST all done for him um he just wanted that quickly done really so i'll put the wheel on um take it back outside and then bring the fiesta back in um and we're gonna have a go at doing the um waterproofing on the back um and just to sort of you know get the uh, it sealed up so it won't leak again because i haven't really sort of a, a, had a little uh, attack at that yet so i want to have a, have, a, have a go at that this afternoon so let's get this out of the way, get it outside, wait for Vinny to turn up later to pick it up, and then we can crack on with the red Fiesta. So I'll go and get it, bring it inside. Bear with me, guys. See you in a bit. Right, okay. So, guys, I've got the red Fiesta back in the workshop. The ST is now outside. Um, and I just want to have a little mess around with a few bits and pieces that I've noticed. Basically... Um, taking it outside and driving it up and down the uh, the yard, I've noticed that it's the gears, it's going into gear and it's the clutch is there and the pedal's there, but I just I think that do you know the um, gear selectors that goes to the gearbox? I think they were turned a little bit, so it just needs they, they just need a little bit of adjustment on those selectors. So I just want to. Have a little mess around with that if I can. Um, take it up in the air, turn it, a, turn it, a, you know, a couple of turns maybe. Have a look at it, see what's if I can adjust it a little bit. 
Um, it just needs to be a little bit, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just, I think I can mess around with it a little bit and make it a bit better. So I want to do that first. And then once I've done that, we're going to crack on with the rear end and start doing the masticking and the sealing of um, hopefully what it is, is, is obviously the water areas that's coming in. Um, managed to get a couple of these, which is, um, it's a bonding sealing um, stuff that sort of goes into interior, external. Um, it's flexible. It's paintable. It, you know, it really does. Um, it's waterproof that you can see it waterproof in, waterproof. It really does a lot of lot of things, this stuff. Um, so this is what I'm going to use. It is clear because I didn't want to use a, a colour. Um, I thought, you know, using clear um, mastic would be a lot, lot better um, for the rear end. Stuff like that. So we're going to do that in a little while. But let me just set you up. I should have a little play around with this. And let's just see if I can make it a bit better. So yeah, let's do this. Right, guys, I think I'm just overthinking this, you know. Um, I just took it out, and it, yeah, it does. I took it out the, the, into the yard, up and down, and it does, um, yeah, it just seems to, to be going into gear okay. Um, can't really, you know, it's a car that's done 120,000 miles. It's never going to be brand new, but um, it's still got to be um, fit for purpose. It's got to it's work well, do you know what I mean, if um, I'm going to give this to the new owner. Um but I just think, yeah, I just think I'm overthinking it a little bit. Just, just sort of um, leave it for now. Let's get the back end sorted out. Um, reseal all these bits and pieces. I'm going to do everything. So on both sides, we're going to do this seam here, going up here. Seal that. Uh, seal these grommets. There, there. Those two at the side. This one. These two over here. Um, all around the light as well. Go down. Seal off that there because that's obviously not not great. That's not helping. So a little bit of um, probably tape over that and then reseal that as well. Take the vent off, reseal that, put that back in place. This one here as well, take that out. And then, yeah, do this side as well as the other side. I know a lot of people were saying that it's possibly come, the leaks coming from these these in this in this vent in this um this trim here. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I, I don't think it is. I, I don't think it's... It's more likely that it's going to be coming from the top piece here. That seam, I reckon, there. That's where more likely it's going to be coming from. Um, or one of these. So we're going to do these bits first. And then uh, we're going to see how it goes. So I'll set you up. We've got to do a lot of cleaning. A lot, clear all this stuff out. Do a lot of bit of bit of massive cleaning around the area, and then we're going to start re-siliconing and resealing all these little bits and pieces. So yeah, let's crack on with this, guys. Let's do this.
Right, okay, so guys, I'm all cleaned up around the areas on both sides and the vents have been removed. Um, now, I don't think the actual vent is leaking because that sponge is absolutely dry. Dry as a bone, no water. Sorry guys, I had to cut off there because someone come to the door um, and uh, wanted to have a little chat about, um, yeah, there's a unit up up for, up for grabs where I am. Uh, so a guy just come in and wanted to talk about it. Um, anyway, what I was saying is that it is absolutely bone dry in there. Um, you can still see where like the dust and stuff is as well. So no water is getting into there. And at the bottom of the sponge is completely dry. Normally that gets saturated with water. So that's not being affected. And the other side as well, it's exactly the same. I'm still going to seal them up. We're still going to mastic them up. We're still going to make sure, you know, that, uh, that, that there's going to be no issues later on. But yeah, absolutely bone dry. Nothing in there at all whatsoever getting in there. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that. I think, I honestly think that it's coming from these seams. I think it's coming from these top seams. I have done some research and I've checked online and they're all saying the same thing. They're all, everyone's saying that it's coming from that seam there. But it also could be coming from that seam there because there's a little bit of movement on that as well. So I just think, just seal it all up. Just seal it all up, all along there, all down there, all round here, all behind the light. Just go, go over that seam sealer. Go all over it. Go all over this. Do the, around the actual, um, these grommets and fixings for, for the lights. Just, just go around all of it. Even just put a bit round here as well. Not too much around there because the light's still got to go against it. So I just want to do a little bead around it. So when I put the light in, it will make, it gives it an extra sort of, sort of seal. Um, <clears throat> do these as well, fill those up, um, get that filled up. I might take that off of there because there's like a see-through. I might just redo this one. Like that. Just turn it off. Because it's going to fail at some point, that is. That's going to fail um, because the stickiness of it goes and then the water will end up getting through. So let's just take them off and redo them. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. So that is what we're going to do next. I'll set you up, guys. Let's get cracking and seal this back end up. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Right, okay, guys, it is all silicon and sealed up. Um, fingers crossed that this does the job. Um, it don't look that bad because <clears throat> I chose the clear silicon, the transparent silicon, um, and you kind of can't really tell because you can't see it. But trust me, I've siliconed everywhere around all the seams, all the way down both sides of that seam 
all over the um, the grommets, all around there. And like I said, I put a little bead of silicon just around around the light um, gasket as well, so that when you put the light in place, it will um, it kind of push against the mastic a little bit, so it give it a better seal. Um, yeah, done the actual blanking uh, there and there, and that's all covered with mastic. So yeah, this is where me um, this is where me ten years of uh, fitting double glazing um for all the big double glazing companies um this is this this helps because you know all that masticking that i used to do back in the day um has helped me now so it don't look it don't look messy do you know what i mean don't look it don't look messy don't look untidy it just looks um yeah all sealed done the vents as well <clears throat> put put mastic behind the vent pushed it on then siliconed it again just to make sure um we have obviously got to do some work on this corner there. I've, I've, I've got the paint guy coming over. I'm going to get rid of all this, this filler because obviously we've got filler around here. So I want to get rid of all that and just take it back to see how far we, we've got it. I think it's probably back to about there. But I'll get the magnet. I'll get the magnet on it as well and just check to see what it is and just start getting that away because I want to get this painted for them as well. Um, but yeah... Hopefully, fingers crossed, guys, that that is solved our water ingress problem into the boot and we can continue uh, with the interior. Um, <clears throat> not quite sure what we're going to do tomorrow, whether or not we're going to continue with this one or we're going to jump on the new project, the Focus. I have started to get some parts in, but I don't think I've quite got enough to, um, to do it yet. I've got the drive shaft for the Focus at the front um and we've got a uh, drop link um as well so i think the lower control arm has turned up to, as well uh, today so <clears throat> i'll have a look i'll have a look to see if we've got enough to do um on that one if not we'll just jump back on this one tomorrow um completely pull out all the interior um and swap over from the donor car interior to this one and then just swap everything over um just so that it's nice and clean it's not been sort of you know mold and stuff has gone all over the seats i know you can clean them but i just think just swap them over i just it just it makes more sense to me really i've got to be honest so yeah <clears throat> but you know at least this one is definitely getting in now um <clears throat> so i'll see what happens tomorrow i've also got some of this you can't really see it um but it is a underbody um spray system and it comes with a gun um and this is for the volkswagen camper van that a lot of you have been noticing outside the front um it's not really been it's a it's it's not my job but someone's asked me to do a little do a little bit of work on it um so yeah that's coming up um uh, probably next week now and um we'll see how it goes but for today that's it i think i've done enough um and then i'll let you know what we're doing tomorrow morning so yeah that's it guys thanks for watching don't forget to drop me a comment give the video a thumbs up really appreciate the support and i'll see you guys tomorrow in the next one take care see you soon